the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. John the Baptist, he confronted that 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 tea trot, right? That I think it was Heron, I think it was Heron, I think it was, yeah, about him marrying that woman, right? He 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 says it's not lawful for you to be with that woman. He confronted, you see what I'm saying, Jim? He did confront him, right? Yes, he caught a lot of sin. And I think that's all we need to do. We need to make sure and call out, but make sure people understand. You need Jesus. You need to you need to meditate on this word. And and the Joshua 1 8, bitch, if you think that Joshua 1 8, that's not based on the law, right? That's not you yeah. know when he said meditate on that word what day and night. Is he's really trying to tell you the benefit of doing that, isn't it? Meditate on that word day and night, then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Well, that's just one of the disciplines, I think, of the spirit that the spirit of God tries to work in our lives. It was doing that even in the Old Testament. Uh, that what I think that's what pa Paul is trying to tell you and say, whatsoever things are lovely. Yes, sir. Things are pure. Yes, sir. Things are a good report. Yes, sir. Eat on oh, these things. things. Yes. Yes. Jim, I mean, I think that's what I'm trying to say. What we want to do to get a person to change to me is to get them to is that Jim, I think that's what you're trying to say too. We try to really we call out a sin, but we try to point toward a way out of sin is what's more critical than being what they're doing. We need some John. We never talk. We need some John the Baptist in these churches. Who yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We're not trying to point out a sin to condemn anyone. We're simply pointing out the standard of what this thing represents, but and that's what we have to always do. We can't give a bad representation. And like a like a like a smooth salesman that you sold me on things. Then when I got the product, that even went, that even went, it's not it doesn't hold up to what it said it could be. Right. Basically, we we want to make it so we want to be clear, honest, and truthful and about true. this product, about yeah. what it is, how it performs, and what what will what will board your contract and what won't board your contract. Exactly. Period. Therefore, you can make the right decision. And you know when you get ready to do something that voids the contract, or you know exactly how it's supposed to perform or what you should be getting out of it. So you know, yeah, we need to bring them in. I, I never talk about, I think we need to just be clear and honest about who we are and what the book says, period. And therefore, we're not normalizing anything. We're not saying, okay, well, that'll be fine. You, you can come in. You can still be one of us and be that and do that. Everything's going to be beautiful. You know, God loves everybody. Because I hear, you know, just like, Words of love, words of love, words of love. And, you know, I've watched a lot of street preaching and different things I like to watch on YouTube and stuff like that. And I've seen them go to certain parades. And you know what the people ask them? Where's the love of God in your heart? Why are you out here preaching that this is a sin and this will carry you to hell and preaching against that? Where's the love in that? And other different abortion clinics. Where's the love in that? Is what they always ask them, the preachers, when they're standing there. And I, and I want to submit to them, the love in that is that I'm out here telling you where you're in error at and, and why you need to repent from it. That's the love in it. There's no love if I don't say nothing and I allow you to wallow in it and end up in a place that you shouldn't end up in because no one ever told you the truth. There's no love in that. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. <laughs> I'm trying to warn you that the bridge is out. <laughs> hey, this hey, I got even a better one. Exactly. I, Jimmy, I even got a better one. I think it is that verse that we read here in verse 11, the testimony is, and such was I as well. Because I used to be out here. <laughs> Come on now. And that's, uh, Jimmy, that's the testimony in itself too, right? And such were some of you. Such were, in most cases, a lot of us can sit there and say, we fit one of these uh, categories or multiple of these categories. And what, what did the Lord do? He brought me out, he'll bring you out. You know, you think about this thing now. When the scripture said that we are the bride of Christ. Yes, sir. You, you do realize that that means that you can commit adultery. Yeah. Yeah. You got a husband. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and you ought not be slipping and dipping with other things, Come other things now. that can take his place. Come on now. And and too many people they see it, but the problem I think that the church needs to clean itself up. That is yeah. that is why that is why when he talks about the boys, that's why he's trying to get you to see. Yeah, he's trying to get you to see that that the spiritual side, you can do the same thing to the God that you say you love. Come on, sir. You can be unfaithful to him. Yes, oh you can, Lord, you can cheat on him. No, you didn't say that, bitch. <laughs> no, you didn't say. Cause they probably said, "I see you doing it." <laughs> That's what they see. <laughs> they see you doing it. Hey, bitch, are we ready to go do some communion so we can wrap up? It's almost eleven o'clock. <laughs> Elder Johnson, you ready to do some communion? We're good. Okay, I'm gonna get mine right here. Jimmy, you want to participate? You want? You ain't doing it a lot. You want to do communion, Jimmy? You can't hear me? He can't hear me. Oh, he's meditating. Elder, you want you you gonna lead us in the communion? Mm-hmm. They're coming back. Okay. But yeah, I think that yeah, I think, I think I, Lee, Lee coming back. Yeah, hey, I like that. I like that thing though, man. That's that's a powerful statement, verse eleven. As such, with some of you. With some of you. <laughs> hey, hey, we we live on Facebook, Elder. See, see, we we ain't saying <laughs> that, that, that that's all contrary to anybody. But the bottom line is, <laughs> anybody listen on live on Facebook, as such, with some of us. Who's talking to you right now? Amen. Hallelujah. And there's some things we're still working on. Sure. Now, no, Jim, on. And, and, and Jimmy may got it though. See, Jimmy got it. He 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 he. I think he's ready to walk <laughs> on the water. I, I think he's ready to walk on water because he got it. He, got <laughs> he he he's he's just a good tree and he ain't no no. But but I can tell some of y'all. Uh, I have not arrived. I like Paul said it, didn't he? He said, I have not yet apprehended. It's the word, the mark of the high call of God which is in Christ Jesus. You got to keep pressing. That's a good you answer. Gotta keep pressing. I think that's a part of, I think that's part of witnessing too, is to let people know, hey, I'm working on some things. I'm not practicing some things. I'm not trying to normalize some things, but I'm working on some things. See, the enemy would love for you to do that because you let your guard down. Uh huh. Hey, no, he, yeah, he think he there now, don't he? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's what they get. You know, it's funny how they do it. Even in the you know like the political realm, how like like they used Ted Cruz when he was trying to you know when he ragged out other people for doing something, and then this what happens when you end up making these type of standards and, 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 and too judging too much too much you better not mess up yourself because what they're gonna do with Bishop they're gonna tear you up they're gonna call you out yep. if you going if you're gonna preach it you better make sure you live it well I think God's gonna expose you <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what I'm saying and he, and he does he does expose us man it's like hmm <laughs> I know it yep. <laughs> that's why I like Bishop Bishop this I think that 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 verse, that verse eleven, in there, as such for some of you, yeah, is so powerful in itself. And then I like it; it's still talking in the past tense to the were. group. <laughs> were some of you? Now the problem is, you might sit there. I think good testimony would be is uh, I can't check them all off yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> but I can tell you what I checked off though, Bishop. I think a good testimony is let me tell you the ones I can check off. <laughs> well, the good part about it is I don't think that anything that the Spirit of God has convicted on you, if you got real conviction about something, I don't think it can stay in your life. Come on. Because, because he'll destroy your peace. You can't sleep right. Food don't taste good. That, that you can't enjoy nothing no more. When he got that knife in you and he's gonna deliver, you ain't have no peace. 
<laughs> you might as well go ahead and give in. Now, you can get through that phase and not repent. You're a bad boy. You're a bad boy. Hey, that same thing like you, if you do something, you go in front of your wife, right? And you know you did. You know you did something wrong. <laughs> or if you're doing wrong, <laughs> you, you know, you can't look at, I think it's not even just a wife, it's somebody in, in general. If you did something wrong to them, it's kind of hard to, 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 you know, be in their presence. So, so you see this in scripture all the time where Paul says that I have a clear conscience in the sight of God Woo! and man. Woo! I like he that. He was only that concerned that he had a clear conscience in God's sight. He on. says, I got a clear conscience in the sight of God Woo! and man. Woo! That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Ella Johnson, where you went to? You had to do the, we kept back to the communion. <laughs> I lost your picture. Elder, what you doing? It, Elder. <laughs> and we lost Elder. He's still there. I see he him. there. I see his icon, but he don't. I think he might have gone what, to get something. You know, but so, so yes, I think no, normalizing is an issue, but we also got to separate the uh, bishop, the, the difference between what what's expedient and right in the law of the land and what's expedient and right in the eyes of God. Okay, so, so here, Bible goes and tell me, let me tell you something I think we, all, we probably want to look at. This is just my suggestion to you, all of us. Uh, last week, we, we saw that how, how, how serious it is for us that, that somehow that God has ordained that we should be able to be tempted. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. And so yeah. and so I went and I started looking at what is the anatomy of temptation? Hmm. Okay. What, yeah. what is the what is the context or the framework of temptation? Isn't that in James? That's James, right? Well, I, yeah. I want to pull I want to pull all of us. I, I started with James, but what I found out was you see, this is so serious because all of our falling short of the glory of God happens right there, temptation. Yeah, yeah. All sin comes into existence right there, temptation. Yeah. <laughs> that means that if you, you really want to know everything there is to know about how you can be tempted. Yeah, yeah. And how the enemy, see, the enemy understands temptation because, see, if that rascal was bold enough to tempt Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> But, but you, you know, the funny part about it is that's though, true. you can't be tempted by what's not in you. And and, and so it becomes, uh, it almost becomes like a, a QA of your own spirituality. Uh, you see, if a man is tempted, he's drawn away with his own lust and entice. So where am I in perfection? Where do I need to be? Well, you know, where do I need to be? Right, but the temptation is going to be the evidence of that. The, the, the temptation will be the evidence of where I'm weak. Well, listen, um, listen. It's not the, 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 listen, it's not the temptation that's the problem. It's the indulgence of the lust that's the problem. Attack, actually take Jesus was tempted. Yeah. The truth is that Jesus was tempted as we are. All point. Yeah, but I'm saying. It's, yes, it's, not, it's not a temptation. It's the indulgence. And that's where we got to, <clears> that's where the rubber meets the road. And that's what we really see where we are in our relationship with him. Exactly. Oh yeah, I agree. And, 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 and it's so important. And that, and that, that's the beauty of it because it's normally it's in the flesh. It's it's, it's I, where am I still where where am I still? What can I say? Dominated by my flesh. What area of my life is still dominated by flesh? And then when he talks about that, praise God. It it, yeah. it, it is it, for me. It has become a QA check to see. Okay, you you know you're not experiencing. The fullness of Christ in this area of your life. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you have mm -hmm. obvious issues in this area of your life. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. Your temp the temptations in this area are too prevalent. You, you're too susceptible to this to really manifest what you're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. And it and it's really has been a way that God has shown me where I was weak at spiritually. Okay. Where, where am I falling prey to temptations? And I think for me, <clears throat> one of the greatest things that happened, which wasn't the, this past election, in the, the past political arena, I was so incited by that stuff that it, it, it like, it, 
it, it took my it took me away. You know, instead of relying on Christ for an answer and depending on and looking toward God for a response. Yeah. I had formulated a lot of things in my mind and I was I was dealing with the self stuff myself. Happened with the job, where I really started having the beginnings of the physical issues was when I was on the job and dealing with the people that were concerned with discrimination. Mm. Then the mm. congestive heart failure falls in. I get off of that, and then I come, and then we get into the political thing, where I lose my sight. <laughs> so the more I'm getting caught up in this stuff, if, if I don't move away from the flesh, I don't think I'm going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is a question I think any of us ought to be asking ourselves. Do you recognize when you're being tempted or when you're being set up to be tempted? I'm getting it. It, Do you it, know it. when you're in the throes of temptation? I know I'm in the most of us don't recognize it until we do until I we know. Don't our and we bleed. We're like, I, well, what happened? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hey, hey, but bitch, I think you do recognize when they come out of something, right? You know, when they, they get tested, didn't know they're being tested, but they do know that they did not respond like they normally responded, and they really do say praise God, right? A lot of yeah. cases, you didn't know the test was coming. Sometimes, maybe that's a whole part of the test. You don't know it's coming. But the question is, can you pass the test? Well, I, I love what the scripture says about Jesus. I, and it, somehow, I believe in Luke chapter 4, I think in Matthew chapter 4, it says that Jesus was led out in the wilderness to be tempted. Yes, sir. Now, now, I really believe that he's baiting Satan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, you talking about like, it's almost like a Job scenario? Have you tried my stuff? I think he knew. I, if I do this, that rascal gonna come. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, there's some oh, things yeah. that say, see, he knew. So we don't know side. We don't know when we're being tempted. And he and he is very sharp. He knows that he's being tempted. Yeah, yeah, he did. He knows like you're talking about, like with the Pharisees, right? They used to he, he knew. Yeah. And so he was yeah, able yeah. to remember the thing in such a way that in all that's why I said he was tempted in all wise. And that yeah. means that in every place he could be tempted, he was tempted. Woo! But never did he indulge his lust or his desire. Never did he let the sinful listen. And even though he's not born of Adam, apparently he got the stuff necessary to sin. To sin, yeah, yeah. Don't be tested if you can't be. Yes, we will. Hey, look, look, we don't put a test on a dead man, do we? <laughs> I mean, he, he has free will. He has the same thing we got. Exactly. Exactly. Too. He has. Free so he can choose to go against the will of God. Exactly, which we can do, right? Nevertheless, yeah. Yeah. nevertheless, not my will. That will be done. Not my will. Yeah. Hey, look, but I think, and I, and I close with this. I think too, Bishop, that when when he when he put, put that cord together and whipped those people out of that temple, uh, now that that was that was because the zeal. It was what I said, the zeal, wasn't it? it was something about the zeal. Yeah, he said that zeal, the zeal for the house is eating me up. Has eaten me up. The zeal for thy house has eaten me up. Yep. Come on now. Come on. He did, yep. he did what he had to do. That was prophesied so, that he would do that. He, yeah. But <laughs> well, he fulfilling. He was fulfilling that. Yep. Which was, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, Bishop. I mean, Elder. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat all of you, for this is my body. We shall be broken for you. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. So they took the bread and they ate it. Remembrance of him. Mm. Mm. You know, I like that vision. Come on and remember. It's such a some of you, he said, and this do this in remembrance of him. When supper ended, ended. Focus on him. Amen. When supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and prayed. He blessed it. 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. But this is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It shall be shed for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So he took the cup and he gave it to his disciples. And they drank. Amen. Well, how many cups you got there, uh, Miss, Miss? I mean, Elder. <laughs> you know? How many cups you got there? Look like you took like two or three of them, didn't you? No, you got this one. You what? Okay, look like you did it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I can't drink as much as I used to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Prayers out. <and> okay. <laughs> I used to drink a lot more. <laughs> He <laughs> 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 got the fire water there. Go ahead, bro. Your prayers out. We good to go. Yeah. You, you can prayers out. Prayers yes, out. right again. Father God, thank you. For this assembly of saints. Uh, thank you, Father God, for the brother that we're going to be complete. I think y'all lost me again. I uh, thank you for the brothers who had the. Lord God, I just pray that you continue to pour it through us. Pour out your spirit on us, bind us together on one accord, and cause with your spirit, lighten us, Lord God, enliven us, that we may be the lights that you have called us to be. I thank you for the revival of this nation. I thank you, Father God, for the fervor that you instilled in us to go forth and propagate your kingdom. Lord God, just thank you for having allowed us to be a part of this great task the salvation of your creation. Just thank you, Lord. Just continue to work in us and through us. And Lord God, let all that we be do be done to your glory and to the presence of your kingdom. And this I pray in the name of my Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. 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 And this, this, you got anything that you think you want, you want us to work on and to address next week that we should read a particular chapter or book? <clears throat> that we can bring up for discussion? Well, I think it would be wise for us to explore the <laughs> of temptation. The temptation? OK. The, the anatomy of temptation. The anatomy of temptation. Framework. <laughs> now, you say you had other, other than uh, James, you got some other one you want well, to I think, I think we ought to pull every, we ought to pull every verse we can find that got anything to do with temptation <laughs> so that we can see what the landscape of temptation look like. Yes, so sir. Because we know we're going to be tempted. Yeah. 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 And, and we know that really, really <coughs> spiritual warfare really happens in the context of temptation. Amen, man. Yeah. yeah. And if you can win now, but if you don't know you're being tempted, if you keep, if you keep doing uh, <laughs> after the fact analysis. <laughs> let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. You remember before you said that we were shaped of fashion in accordance with our obedience. Yeah. You're breaking up a little bit, but we, we wait for yeah, we are, we are obedient. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I think uh, at some point you said that we were shaped, we were conformed to the image of Christ through obedience. Yeah. And those temptations, yeah. are they, are they a part, aren't they a part of that process? Absolutely. I mean, those situations, yeah. Listen, so the temptation what, what, what Romans saying? By one man sin or disobedience, <laughs> many were made sinners. Yeah. Right. Even so, by, by the obedience of one, many are made. Many are made righteous. Thanks. So, so in the temptation, you see, the temptation really is to get you to disobey God. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you some. I'm gonna show you something about his glory. That's why I think you all do this. That means that if you are in Christ, it 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 it, it assumes that when you're being drawn away, 
you are drawn away from that which is already good. Because hmm. the temptation ain't to get you to do good. Yeah. It's to stop you from doing good. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you cannot. Adam and Eve were doing good long as they weren't eating from the tree. Amen. He came in and tempted them to disobey mm. that thing that was in the heart of God concerning them. And all of what I'm saying is, it, it, the gift that gives you the benefit that if you're in Christ and things are going according to discipleship, that you will be walking in that which is pleasing to God. Okay, Amen. okay. Yeah. The enemy come along to try to tempt you to do something contrary to that. Right. And now the question is, what, how, right? That all depends on every situation is custom, uniquely, yeah. peculiarly yeah. designed for you. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I remember T.D. Jake said he, he ain't going to tip you with some, some, it was about some woman that was plucking his nerves, and he said uh, he was talking to another preacher, and, and the preacher, and I guess it was a woman at that time, said, uh, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna tempt you with something you don't want. So if, if, if this was coming your way and you don't want it, this ain't this ain't that is not the test. Yeah. Someone else the test is something else, but it's not that. Jesus said he goes through a sifting process. Woo! He sifts Ooh. he sifts to find what is what will lure you. He listen, Ooh. he watching you tender. Woo! He watching you with Sally walk by. You you try to fool everybody else, but you ain't gonna fool him. He said, "I saw how you looking at her." <laughs> Woo! I saw how you were shaking your head when she walked out. Oh, I think I might. I think there might be something right here. Let me right see. Here. If I, let me see if I can drop some bait in there right here. Right here. Woo! So we 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 can fool ourselves. We can fool other people, but you ain't gonna fool the enemy. Yeah. My fact, and bitch, I think that's why I want people to say they struggle with something. It's only struggling in certain areas that is an area that they the enemy knows they're gonna struggle with. Yes, sir. Yeah. He done, listen, he done did his homework. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Hey, that, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead. I already got a couple of scriptures. I know we got to bring in there with that. We have to bring in James, and we have to bring in the beginning, the first test, the test. The first test that failed everything else is, you know, Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter three has to be in there because that's where she saw things look good, made one wise. It's like that was a test that they failed. So I think, yeah, I bring in. I think I got. So I got a good start. Of it, start off with some scriptures with it. All right. <clears throat> hey. Y'all be all right, gentlemen. You too. Y'all too. Have keep, a blessed keep, day. Y'all keep your eyes open there because you you know you might get hit. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. <laughs>